So today is Sunday, May 17th. A few days ago, it was Thursday, May 14th, and it was pretty warm outside. It was about 70 degrees, really sunny, and there was a little bit of a breeze. So I started thinking on that day, you know, it's springtime, but pretty soon it'll be summer. But it kind of feels like we were just in the middle of winter and the time went by so fast. Then I started thinking about seasons and about what my favorite season was. Do you guys have a favorite season? There's four different seasons, fall, winter, spring, and summer. And there's different reasons to like each of the different ones. I feel like I'm kind of in a tie between winter and summer because I love snow, but I also love it when it's really warm and I can go swimming outside. So I don't know. Do you guys have a favorite season? Do you guys have a tie like that? Some of the time I like to ask questions because then I get to know people better. I can learn more about what they like what they don't like, and learn a little bit more about their personality. And that's a fun way to make friends. All right, well, let's think about our schedule today. So we just did our All A Lot Hallelujahs. We're going to go to Jimmy now, see what he's going to teach us today. Then we'll do our story time. We'll have offering and prayer. We'll do Amanda. And then we'll come back here for some music time and we'll get to check on the plant that we're growing. Do you guys remember what plant we're growing? It's Amanda's tomato plant and just like last week I have it sitting in that room over there and it's sitting um, it's sitting on the ledge right now next to the window so that when the sun is shining it can soak up all of those sunshine rays. Uh, so we're gonna let it stay in there for now but I'll go get it later to show you guys. All right, well, I hope you have a good time hearing from Jimmy. Bye. Good morning, everybody. Guess what? This past Friday was National Pizza Party Day. So my family ate some pizza, and we watched a movie, and, and we started telling some jokes, and I wanted to share some of the jokes with you. Are you ready? <clears throat> What is a dog's favorite kind of pizza? Its favorite kind is pepperoni pizza. And uh, where, where does pepperoni go for vacation? Well, it goes to visit the Leaning Tower of Pizza. You know, because it sounds like the Leaning Tower of Pizza. Uh, how does a pizza introduce itself? Well, it might say, slice to meet you. Do you guys think a, a pizza place on the moon would be any good? Well, I think it would have great food, but no atmosphere. You know, because sometimes the, one of the things that we say a restaurant has is atmosphere. Like, it's a nice place to eat, but there's no air on the moon, so it doesn't have any atmosphere. Uh, and one more, I had a goat's cheese pizza the other day, and he was not happy that he took that I took his pizza. You know, because it sounds like I'm saying a pizza with goat's cheese on it, but I'm actually saying a cheese pizza that belonged to a goat. Let me say it again. I had a goat's cheese pizza the other day. And he was not happy. You know what, guys? I, I don't think I'm going to tell you any more pizza jokes. They're fun, but, yeah, they're a little too cheesy. Ha! <laughs> yeah, our family pizza party was a lot of fun, especially since it came after a long day of school. Actually, I learned the new word I want to share with you guys that day when I was reading the Bible with my mom. Are you ready to hear it? <clears throat> this week, I learned the word Samaritan. A 
Samaritan was a person who lived in a place called Samaria, which was, uh, it's kind of a long story. Hmm. So, do you guys remember how God made David the king over all of Israel? Well, after he died, his son became king, and then his grandson, but they weren't as faithful as King David, and people started to worship false gods instead of the real God, and the kingdom got split in half. The south part of the kingdom was the part with Jerusalem, and that's where David's descendants were kings, like Jesus. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, which was part of the part of the southern kingdom. But in the north part of the kingdom, they made a they made a city called Samaria their new capital. Then a while later, the northern kingdom of Samaria was conquered by some enemies called the Assyrians. And instead of worshiping God like the Israelites in the south did when they were captured by Babylon, they started to worship the false gods that the Assyrians worshipped, too. By the time Jesus was born, the Samaritans weren't really Israelites at all. Instead, they hated the Israelites. And the Israelites hated them right back. So much that sometimes if they needed to take a trip north of Jerusalem, they would take a super long route around Samaria just to make sure that they wouldn't have to meet any Samaritans. Isn't that terrible? What's amazing, though, is that no matter how much the Israelites and the Samaritans hated each other, Jesus could still bring them together to worship God. In fact, I think Miss Christina is going to tell us something about the Israelites and the Samaritans in the story today. I'd better hop off so I can listen to that, but I'll see you all later. Bye! Welcome back, friends. Did you enjoy Jimmy's pizza jokes? I thought they were pretty funny. So today we're gonna continue our lessons on Jesus's parables. Do you guys remember what a parable is? So a parable is a story that Jesus would tell that had a meaning to it. The past few weeks, uh, we've been talking about a lot of parables that had a meaning about God, about how much God loves us. But this parable, the meaning is going to be a little bit different. It's going to be about how we need to love other people, just like how God loves us. It's called the Good Samaritan. Jesus was so popular with the people that the religious leaders became jealous of him. They wanted to get rid of him, and some even wished for his death. Others tried to catch him out with difficult questions, such as, what do I need to do to have eternal life? What does God's law say you should do? Jesus asked the leader in return. Love God with all my heart and strength and mind, answered the man. And I must love my neighbor as much as myself. But what does that mean? Who is my neighbor? To answer the question, Jesus did what he often did. He told a story. There was once a man who was on a journey from Jerusalem to Jericho. On the way, he was attacked by robbers. They hurt him and they left him on the ground. They took his stuff. Soon after, a priest passed by along the road. When he saw the man, he walked by on the other side of the road. Then a teacher of the law came along, said Jesus. He did nothing to help the man either. He too walked by and continued down the road. 
The next person that Jesus brings into the story is an interesting character. It's a Samaritan. And many of the Jewish people didn't like people who lived in Samaria. Later, said Jesus, a Samaritan came along. He saw the man and felt sorry for him. He gently cleaned the man's wounds. So Jesus is putting this into the story because he's talking about two different people that otherwise probably wouldn't like each other. Because Jewish people often didn't like Samaritan people and didn't even want to be around them. But this man, this Samaritan man, he wanted to help out the Jewish person anyway. With great care, he placed the man on his own donkey and took him to a nearby inn. The next day, said Jesus, when the Samaritan had to leave, he gave the innkeeper extra money and said, take care of this man. When I come back this way again, I will pay you any extra money that you need to spend. The Samaritan did all of this, even though the hurt man was a Jew and Jews often did not like Samaritans. Jesus looked at the leader who had asked him the question and said, so who would you say behaved like a real neighbor? If you guys remember, the reason why Jesus is telling this story is because there were some people who were coming up and listening to him, and one of the Jewish leaders asked him, who was my neighbor? Who do I need to show love to? So now Jesus is asking, which person do you think showed the most love to the man who was hurt? Was it the priest or the teacher of the Jewish law? You would think it would be one of those people because they know about God's law and they know about how they need to love other people. But those two people didn't help. They just walked by. And who was the person who did help? Well, it was the Samaritan. The Jewish leader replied, the good Samaritan. Then go, said Jesus, and try to be more like him. It's easy to be nice to people who are nice to us. And it's easy to love people who love us too. But what's really hard is being nice to people and loving people who are mean to you. Have you guys ever had somebody who didn't like you or who was mean to you? And maybe it hurt your feelings. Maybe you felt sad or maybe you felt angry and you didn't want to be around that person anymore. Jesus is telling us that even when it's hard and even when somebody is not nice to us, we need to show them love. Just like how this man in here, the Samaritan, showed the Jewish person love, even though Jews often didn't get along with Samaritans. Did you know that God does that for us too? Sometimes we mess up. Sometimes we mess up on accident, but sometimes we mess up on purpose. We do something wrong because we want to do something wrong. I know I've done that before and I've had to say I'm sorry because I realized that what I did was wrong and I shouldn't have done it. Even when we do something wrong, God still loves us. He loves us so much and nothing can ever stop him from loving us. And so God wants us to take that love that he's given us and to share it with others too. 
even when they're not nice to us. God wants us to love everyone. All right, well, it's time for offering now. So I'm gonna go get the offering basket and my guitar, and then we can take our offering. basket at your house, I want you guys to go grab that. It could be a plastic bowl from your kitchen or a tub from your room or even the lid to a plastic tub. You can use anything for your offering basket. It doesn't have to look exactly like this. All right, so I'm going to put on a song and then you guys go find your basket and when you get back, we'll start offering. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. Come on now, join with me, everybody sing. I'm gonna lift my voice to glorify my King. He is a mighty God and worthy of our praise. We give Him everything, He's good in every way. He is always there for us. He's good in every way. Pouring out His awesome love. He's good in every way. He fills us up with peace and joy. He's good in every way. So you got your offering basket? Great. What we're going to do is we're going to take our hand and gently place it in the bottom of the basket. And that tells Jesus, Jesus, I'm going to give you my heart today. Which is a very, very special offering that you can give to Jesus.
right, so I'm gonna go put my guitar away and then we'll pray for offering. so much for loving us. Thank you that you love us even when we mess up. Thank you that you love us when we do something wrong and you want us to come to you to say that we're sorry and to ask for forgiveness because you forgive us willingly. You love us so much. Thank you for sending Jesus down to the earth to live a perfect life to die on the cross, to take all of our sins, to be buried, and then to raise again on the third day, conquering sin and death forever. We know that we're a part of your forever family, and God, we are so thankful. God, help us to be kind to people, even when they are mean to us. Help us to love people, who don't like us. Help us to see other people who are hurt or who need help. People that we might not normally talk to. Maybe people that we don't even know that well, but we're able to help. Sometimes even just a smile can make people feel better. God, thank you for giving us your love and your spirit inside of our hearts so that we can love and help other people. Please be with us this week. Help us to have a good week. We pray all of this in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. All right, friends, so it's time to go talk to Amanda. So I hope you guys have fun with whatever Amanda's doing today. Bye. Why, hello there, Amanda Banana. How's it going? Oh, um, I'm sorry, Kyle. I was trying to call Jimmy for the Chilp Church video. I must have accidentally hit your picture instead of his. Uh, no worries. People get us confused all the time. So, you're filming for Children's Church, eh? Yep. What are you up to? I am taking my weekly bubble bath with my good friend, Mr. Rubber Duck. Wow, that is one big rubber duck. He certainly is. Oh, pardon me. That's the timer for my blueberry scones. They are almost done baking, and it's time for my morning tea after my bath. Huh, that sounds very important. I'll let you go. Bye, Kyle. Bye-bye, Amanda. Until next time. Oh, hi, Amanda. It's great to see you. I, I wasn't expecting a call from you. Yeah, I, I normally do an activity for the kids now, but I thought it would be fun to call you today instead because it's been so long since I called you. Wow, that, that's true. Though uh, you did get to see me sort of sing you happy birthday last week, right? I did. That was so great, Jimmy. Thank you for playing your guitar for me. I loved it. Oh, you're welcome. I'm glad you liked it. I've, I've still been learning how to play for my mom, but I guess it may be a little longer than I thought until I'm ready for a band to do concerts and stuff. Maybe a couple more months. What kind of songs have you been learning? Well, I've been learning the, uh, the Beatles song, Eleanor Rigby, and I'm working on Let It Be, too, but it's really hard. 
Oh, have you, have you been practicing for your part in our band? You bet I have. I can now blow bubble music in skim milk, 1%, 2%, but I'm really perfecting the chocolate milk. Wow, that's some impressive versatility. Our band will be able to do all kinds of music. I was thinking we could start with some jazz and then move on to Elvis Presley. Maybe throw in a little bit of reggae. That's awesome. Oh, what kind of milk would you use for each kind of music? Hmm, uh, strawberry milk, whole milk, and coconut milk. Wow. We're going to be the best guitar and milk bubble band in the whole world. You bet. So, Jimmy, besides practicing the guitar, what else have you been doing? Well... I've still been having school here at home, learning all kinds of new words and new math stuff, and that's, that really has been fun. Oh, and I've also been playing with my Legos some. So I had this big castle that I built like forever ago, but I took it apart a couple weeks ago so I could use its pieces to build something new. It was a, a little sad taking it apart, but it's really cool that now the pieces which used to be part of my castle are part of my ninja mountain fort and, and the mecha shark people's submarine. Uh, sharks need a submarine? Well, I, I know they can already breathe underwater and everything, but they must get tired of swimming everywhere, right? So they can use the submarine kind of like how we use cars. Huh. That's a great idea, Jimmy. Thanks. Oh, how about you? Have you been doing anything fun? Let me think. Oh, well, one fun thing we've been doing is making blanket forts. Huge blanket forts. We put a blanket over a big table and then pull out the chairs a bit and, and drape even more blankets over the chairs. It's like a blanket fort castle. That's awesome. It really is. Jack and I have also been building a birdhouse. My dad helps with sawing the wood, but he taught us how to use a hammer, so we get to do that. We have to be really careful, but it's really fun. A and when we're all done building it, we're going to paint it. I want to paint it red because that's my favorite color, but Jack wants to paint it blue because that's his favorite color. So we might paint it red and blue stripes, or we might paint it purple. Not sure yet. Purple is a good color, too. Oh, uh, hey, Amanda, I'm glad I have a chance to talk to you because I actually had a question after Miss Christina's story. Oh, yeah? What is it? Well, we learned how, import how it's important for us to love and help our neighbors, right? But how can we help our neighbors, like in the story, if we're not supposed to go outside a lot or go too close to our neighbors? Ah. Again, Amanda, how's it going? What is going on? Oh, um, sorry, Jimmy. This is Kyle. Kyle, this is Jimmy. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Uh, Amanda, what is going on and why is there a walrus on our call? So, Kyle's another one of my friends from church, and he knows practically everything there is to know. So I thought we could ask him your question. He's a walrus. Amanda! Amanda, why are we getting advice from a walrus? Um, I can still hear you. Because Kyle is awesome and he's my friend and I told you he knows everything. Yep, can still hear you. So, Kyle, uh, we had a question. I am all ears. Well... Really, I am all tusk, but that is neither here nor there. Hmm. Miss Christina read us a story today called The Good Samaritan. It was a parable that Jesus told after an expert in Jewish law asked him, What must I do to in inherit eternal life? In the story, we learned that you need to help and love everyone, even your enemies and people who are mean to you. So, 
I was wondering, how can we still love and help our neighbors if we're not supposed to go near them? That is a very good question, Jimmy. Let me ask you a question first. I thought, Amanda, I thought you said he had all the answers. Why is he asking us a question? Jimmy, shh. Have you ever sent someone a birthday card? Yeah, to, to my grandpa because he lives a few hours away. Oh, I've sent birthday cards before too. And actually last week we celebrated Amanda's birthday by making her videos of lots of friends from Children's Church telling her happy birthday and she loved it. I sure did. Well, it sounds like Amanda felt really loved and special even though you weren't there. It's true, I, I did. So you're saying that we can love people and help people even when we're far away? You betcha. That's really cool. You know, th there's lots of people at the church right now making face masks to give to other people. My mom has been helping out on that project too. Is, is that loving our neighbor? Well, what do you think? I think it is. There's lots of people who need face masks and we're helping those people by making face masks and giving them away. Oh, and I have a friend whose dad is working with a food pantry, so my family has been praying for him and all the other people working there and all the people getting food there. Can praying for people be loving our neighbors too? Can you think of times when the Bible tells us that people prayed for their neighbors? Hmm. Well, my mom was just telling me about how when Paul was in prison, he spent lots of time praying for other people in the church and, and also for the guards in the prison. Oh, and, and Jesus spent lots of time praying for his disciples and for us. And he really loves us. Absolutely. Praying for our neighbors is one of the ways the Bible teaches us to love them. I beg your pardon, my friends, but that timer means that my clam souffle has cooled to the perfect temperature and is ready to eat. I fear that it will be much too cool if I don't retire to the dining room post haste. Amanda, what does that mean? Uh, I think it means he needs to go. Kyle, thanks for helping us with our questions. Boy, you, you really do know everything. Just enough to know that I don't, and that is more important. Ta-ta for now! Okay, Amanda, that, that is one smart walrus. Thank you for introducing us. Maybe he can teach me how to make his clam poofay sometime, because that sounds delicious. No, Jimmy! Not a clam pouffe, it's a clam souffle. Oh, uh, what exactly is a souffle? Uh, something that grown-ups eat, I think. Oh, uh, Kyle is a grown-up? He has really long tusks. Oh, that's true. They're, they're, they're way longer than my teeth. Well, I think my mom needs to use the computer now, so I better, uh, retire post chase too. Have a great week, Amanda, and thanks again for the advice on how I can love my neighbors. I hope you have a great week too. Bye, Jimmy. All right, friends. So I hope you enjoyed hearing Amanda and Jimmy have a Zoom call. That was kind of unexpected. I wasn't expecting them to have a Zoom call. That was really fun, wasn't it? All right, so let's sing a few songs that we know. Let's do God Made Me Special first.
have your driver's license, right? You guys have your driver's license? Called purple. 
there's this really interesting thing that happens when you're far away from a mountain. Sometimes when the light comes onto the mountain and it bounces off, is it can actually look purple when you're looking at the mountain. So that's why this person wrote inside of this song, the purple headed mountain. Isn't that kind of cool? So our sign language word for purple is this. What you do is you take your first and your second fingers here and you kind of stick them out in a little upside down V shape and you put your thumb in the middle and you shake it. So that's the color purple. So we're going to start off this song by saying the purple headed mountain. And the next words are the river running by. So this is more talking about God's creation. The purple headed mountain, the river running by. And then the next part says the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. Have you guys ever seen a sunset or a sunrise and how colorful it is? Sunsets and sunrises are really special, aren't they? So we're going to use our same motion that we've done before for the sun. So we're going to go the sunset, so pretending like the sun is setting, and the morning, so back up, the sun's coming back up, that brightens up the sky. Because remember in our courses we say all things bright and beautiful. So we're going to use that saying brightens up the sky. All right, so let's try to put it all together. The purple headed mountain, the river running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. All right, let's try it one more time, and then we'll sing the song all the way through with verses one, three, and five also, okay? The purple-headed mountain, the river running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. Great. All right, so I'm going to go play the note on my guitar and then we'll sing through the whole song, which is going to be for us verses one, two, three, and five. Cool? Wind in the wind. 
give us eyes to see them and lips that we might tell how great is God Almighty who has made all things well. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and Nice work, guys! So now you've learned four verses from that song. That's pretty long, right? But I bet you guys are getting really good at remembering the words, aren't you? And it was kind of fun. We got to learn a color today. We got to learn a sign language color. It's purple. It's purple. It's kind of fun. All right, so I'm gonna go get my plant and bring it back in here so that you guys can see it. All right. And I feel a little silly. I keep calling it my plant, but it's not my plant. I mean, Amanda's name is right on this cup. It is Amanda's plant. <laughs> All right, so here it is. Isn't this great? So remember we talked about how um, when the seeds first start growing and the plant first comes out of the soil is it starts with two leaves and they're the two baby leaves and that's what starts soaking in all the sunshine so it can start to make the real leaves for the plant. And I think this week you're really going to get to see the difference between the two. So look at these two baby leaves. Can you guys see how the two baby leaves, they're really flat on the sides and they're just like boop, just nice and smooth edges. But then look at these leaves in the middle and how they have different shapes on their edges. That's because these are the special real tomato leaves. So that's why they look so different. Isn't that interesting? And let's see if it still smells like a tomato leaf. Because remember last week I was telling you guys about how they smell very unique. Kind of a little bit like basil. Yep, it definitely still smells like tomato leaves. Ooh. Okay, all right. So I'm going to keep showing you guys this every week. But I think this is awesome. It's doing really well. And these leaves in the middle are growing even bigger. And there's a couple of new ones that are starting to grow too. So this is really exciting. And also I have more strawberries I need to show you. Isn't that crazy? The strawberries are growing so fast. I wasn't expecting this at all. Normally I don't get that many strawberries at once, but there's a couple upstairs in Miss Stephanie's office. So let's walk upstairs and we can check them out. All right, friends, so we're up here at my office and I'm gonna take you guys inside so we can see that strawberry plant. And then we'll go next door into Miss Stephanie and Miss Leslie's office and we'll get to see the strawberry plant that I keep in that room. Okay, so here we are. And here is the strawberry that I was showing you guys last week. Let's find it. Oh, there it is. So it still has kind of a funny little shape to it, but it looks red and it looks delicious. So I can't wait to eat this little guy. Okay, so we're walking over to Miss Stephanie and Miss Leslie's office now. I'm gonna turn on the light. Whoop, nice and bright. And here is my strawberry plant that I keep in their office. And this one is doing really well. Do you see all of these flowers and all of these strawberries that are growing? The only problem is that it's doing so well that there are little flies that like to live in the dirt here. And so we're trying to figure out how to help them have a new home so that they're not living inside of my strawberry plant. But the strawberries are still growing, so that's really great. So I can show you guys. I have this one strawberry right here. That's a really nice one. 
And this one isn't quite done growing yet. It still has a little bit more time to go. Same with that one. This one has a lot more time to go because it's barely pink at all. And then there's this guy. That's a nice size one. And then let's turn the plant just a little bit more. Whoop. Here's another one and that's a pretty big one. That's a nice one. Ooh, so these are ready to be picked and they are ready to be eaten. So I hope you guys had a good time in Children's Church today and I hope you guys have a great week. See you guys next time. Bye.